The following audio drama is rated G Wiz, which means it's perfectly safe for folks and families of all ages to enjoy with Cheese Wiz. And welcome to Sonic Society, episode 485. I'm your host to solve for X, Jack Ward. And I'm your host on the Y axis, uh, David Alt. Ja- uh, Jack, um, I know I'm a maths tutor and all, but but why are we doing this today here? Uh, well, good question. I've been, I've been working feverishly on the good old spreadsheet of season 12. Ah. And it certainly takes all my, my own arithmetic wizardry to count up all the times in the episodes and to start thinking about All Hallows' Eve. Ooh, yes. The month of October is usually usually the big month for radio drama of the horror variety. And that means for us, the Sonic Society often presents a lot of that great horror in the month of November, for those who have missed it. But in the meantime, tonight, we have another premiere with Don't Close Your Eyes live radio from Ryan Kazava. Ryan, along with Keith Sura, write cast, direct, produced, and perform with the effort to preserve the pace and excitement of the golden age of radio drama. Hopefully, we can get Ryan or Keith or both on this season's Sonic Speaks to talk about their process of creating live theater. Oh, that's brilliant. There's more. Apparently, some of their best shows were mixed by a Grammy award-winning producer, so we're excited to have them as our feature this week. Wow, yes, but before that, let me remind folks that episode 500 is coming up. Please take the time to consider your memories, hopes, streams and even requests for ponies <laughs> and send them off either either written or preferably in audio emailed to sonic society at gmail.com 500 regular season shows is a huge milestone i'm very proud to be a part of it and i know jack you you have put in a lot of work over the last 12 years uh, <laughs> and we would love to share it all with you we absolutely would absolutely so without further ado on with the show don't close your eyes radio theater right here on the sonic Society. Don't close your eyes. Live radio theater is now on the air. These things don't always start the same way. One day you're just a girl from Goshen. Next thing you know, you're on a plane to Berlin. Good old USA has a job for you, and nobody can resist Uncle Sam when he says he needs your help, especially for a job like this. Mr. Hitler, I'd say it's a pleasure, but it's not. Who are you? Just an everyday American, Adolf. And I'm here with a little message from every man, woman, and child in the land of the free and the home of the brave. And just what is that? (laughs) Ah, you (laughs) punched me! Now it's a pleasure. Are you wearing a ring? Indeed, my two college rings. Oh, that's smart! Well, I'm glad my smart's smart. You can't do this to me! I am Adolf Hitler, leader and chancellor of the Reich! And I'm Betsy MacGyver, Nazi puncher. That's for George Washington. And that's for Thomas Jefferson. That's for Abraham Lincoln. Now, just let me get my big stick and I'll give you one for Teddy Roosevelt. Not so fast, Betsy MacGyver. You sneaky rat. Indeed. <laughs> you Americans are the same, so cocky. I will show you true Aryan power. You'd best put that away or I'll make you sorry, Shickle Gruber. My name is Hitler! <laughs> For your insolence, you will pay dearly. I shall send you to Dr. Mengele's laboratory. Men! Men! Take this bothersome woman to Dr. Mengele's experiment station. Hi, Hitler! Oh, you're in for it now, Fritz. It's Adolf. And you won't be so full of bravado once the full might of the Nazi army is done with you. Please. (laughs) How did you do that? It's easy when you live on apple pie and personal liberties. Tire of your platitudes. You missed. Um, yes. Being a vegetarian has made you weak, Adolf. <laughs> Everyone knows a well done beefsteak is the best thing for eyesight. <laughs> I've punched them all to get to you, Adolf. Himmler, Goebbels, Bormann, and now you, the pièce de résistance. Oh, stop! Please, I'll give you anything! 
Ah, gold! Ah, jewels! A ah, longer coffee break! Wait. <laughs> what? It's almost time to wake up, Betsy. It's almost time to wake up, Betsy. 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 Betsy? Betsy? Huh? Wake up. You're sleeping at your desk again. I'm, I'm on a coffee break. A dreaming break, you mean? Like your others? Where you beat the stuffing out of some Nazis? Oh, no. Talking in your sleep again. Oh, Lucille, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> Don't turn red on my account. Betsy, you need to give this Nazi stuff a rest. Pretty soon you'll start seeing Germans everywhere. That's not true. I'm sure it's just... That you miss your brother? Well, it's been three weeks since his last letter. There's a war on, Betsy. It tends to mess up the mail service, something awful. I'm sure he's fine. At least North Africa is warm, right? I just wish there was more I could do. Uh, right now you need to look busy before Piltdown gets here. If he catches you snoozing again, you're in trouble. More trouble? I've already been demoted to cataloging pottery shards. I don't know. He'll probably have you rewrapping the mummies or something. Miss MacGyver. I'm right here, Mr. Piltdown. Well, move this crate. The one you just dropped on my desk? Yes. Crushing several shards from a canopic jar of Ramses II? That's coming out of your paycheck. Hey! It's a joke, Lucille. Everyone knows these stupid shards are valueless. Then why am I cleaning and cataloging them? Because you're a shirker, Betsy. Always with your head in the clouds, streaming away when the real world is right here. Here in this dank, poorly lit basement? Well, uh, uh, the real world is out there. I appreciate your concern, but I have some harmless fantasies is all. Oh, harmless. How many times have you wandered into traffic? Only three. And how did your parrot escape? I left its cage open. And? And my apartment door. And? And the front door of my building. <laughs> Luckily, I made a break before you blew the place up. I didn't blow it up. I'd merely caused a minor conflagration. You did leave the gas on. Well, yes. And a cigarette burning. I know. There's no smoking allowed in here, MacGyver. We have a lot of flammable mummies. Don't worry, Mr. Piltdown. <laughs> oh, come to think of it, all mummies are flammable. I don't smoke. Oh, you don't smoke. I just like to light them and let them burn in an ashtray. It calms me. Is it your brother's brand? Yeah. Oh, honey. <sighs> Betsy, here's my two cents worth. <clears throat> Find yourself a nice boy, settle down, make a home, have some cute little babies. This is no work for a pretty girl. Um, excuse me? I stand by it, Lucille. You little weasel. I ought to knock your bald little block off. Oh, you watch your mouth, Lucille, or you'll be down here with Betsy working on junk. I'll have you dusting dust until you go blind and your allergies drive you to the loony bin. Don't go soak your head. What, 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 what's that? <laughs> I said... I'll see you later, Betsy. Lousy, no good. I'll choose to ignore that. For now. I'm not trying to be mean, Betsy, but some people belong at home. Daydreaming over a stove. I shall be more diligent in my duties, Mr. Piltdown. What about the nice boy who brings you things? You mean Billy? The delivery boy? He has to bring me things. It's his job. Well, he seems sweet on you, though. <laughs> look. Look what he dropped off for you today. Ooh, looks big. Oh, and it was darned heavy. Oh, dear. What's up? Well, this crate was supposed to go to the New York Veterinary Museum, not the Antiquities Museum of New York. Well, you call that Billy fellow and have him rectify this mistake post-haste. It'll give you a chance to talk about, I, I don't know, baseball or rationing or how neither of you has a date this Friday. I'm perfectly fine without a date this Friday. <laughs> you keep telling yourself that, Betsy. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some recently even more shattered pottery to examine. 
suits yourself. Great. I wonder if Billy did this on purpose. Is, is there something in here? What? Oh my gosh. What? What? A penguin? What? <coughs> oh, a sick penguin. <laughs> I didn't even know penguins could get colds. What? Oh, poor little fella. Here. Well, maybe you need to bundle up. Take my scarf. What? Oh, you're welcome. Why am I talking to a penguin? I'm cracking up working down here. Oh, there's a phone number on the crate. Well, let's get you home, little fella. Hello? Operator? Could you please get me Ludlow 70737, please? Yes. Is this the New York Veterinary Museum? My name's Betsy MacGyver. I mistakenly received a crate addressed to you. Yes, yes. It appears to be a Sveniscus Humboldti. No, I'm not trying to sound smart. That's what it says on the packing label. Yes, medium-sized, black and white. Like most penguins, yes. You got a package today? An Egyptian scroll? Oh, please handle it carefully. I work at the Antiquities Museum of New York. Yes, we are a museum, too. There are several. It's a big city. No, I'm not trying to be a smart aleck. I, I just don't want to be stuck with a penguin with a cough. Well, this one does. Listen. I understand they're used to cold. Maybe it's the smog. No, I've never heard of a penguin with allergies. Perhaps that's something you should be studying. Hello? Hello? What? Oh, she hung up of all the nerve. What? I'll call you Beekman. How's that? What? What? Oh, I'm glad to hear it. We can't let Mr. Piltdown find you or he'll have my head. I need that scroll. It'll be the first interesting thing I've studied in three months. We just have to find you a nice, cozy place to sleep until tomorrow. Here, I'll put my coat in here. And voila, an average-sized New York apartment. <coughs> now you just keep it down. We don't want you to get found out. I'll bring you some sardines later. I just need to catch a couple more Zs. <sighs> I know just how you feel, little guy. Having wings and not being able to fly. Hold it right there, Herman Goering. Betsy MacGyver, how did you get aboard my bimer? Your security is as sloppy as your table manners. I'm here to deal you some justice, USA style. Bah! You'll never stop me from bombing those orphans. Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> this one's for Mom. Ow! And this one's for Apple Pie. Ow! Cut it out! And this one is for Robert Green Ingersoll. Who? Learn your history. Ow! Oh! Back off, you insane woman! A grenade? You're getting desperate, Gary. Not at all. I shall simply deploy the grenade like this and make my exit like this! Not so fast, you lousy hun! Geronimo! Ah! Get away from me! Ow! Had enough yet? Ha! What if I refuse to deploy my parachute? Then we'll both hit the ground like a ton of sour rotten. <laughs> Punch me all you want! You... Ooh! My head is spinning! It won't be for long. Thanks for the loan! Ah! Betsy MacGyver! Terribly sorry to wake you. My associate Laszlo here is terribly clumsy. I'm sorry, Helga. <laughs> it's damp down here and my hand slipped. In the future, perhaps you will remember my advice to always wear gloves. Uh, I'll remember. Sorry. Sorry. I'm Betsy MacGyver. Can I um, help you in some way? I severely hope that you can. We are representatives of the National Museum of Zurich. Zurich? Yes. We are Swiss. Very Swiss. I wouldn't dream of eating cheese that doesn't have holes in it. And we? I own four cuckoo clocks. I'm crazy about them. That will do. And don't get me started on the chocolate. Ow, my face, you dumb cough! Swiss! As we said. And we believe a package has recently been delivered here by mistake. Well, there has. 
But what does the Swiss National Museum want with a penguin? A what? What? What in the name of Nibelugan is that? A penguin, it seems. A humble penguin, to be precise. What? Uh, with a cold. Disgusting. Hey. We have no interest in exotic fowl. We are here about an item of antiquity. The scroll? Indeed. Well, I'm afraid it was misdelivered. I expect it soon. May I ask what is your interest in the scroll? Academic. A Swiss academic. <laughs> there was a minor kerfluffle with the Egyptian Cultural Heritage Association. The scroll was supposed to be transported to Switzerland, but they were aggravatingly nervous about its safety. Well, there is a war on. Be noticed. But not too much. Neutral and all. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that without confirmation from Mr. Piltdown, I cannot allow anyone to take possession of any item from this museum. Mr. Piltdown? My boss. Squat man, bald. Aura of superiority. So, bald, squat, and like every man alive. Mm. <laughs> Clearly not Aryan. What was that? Um, uh, is his name Ryan? Uh, I knew a uh, Ryan Piltdown, um, at Harvard. His first name is Gus. We're sorry to have disturbed you and your crate. We shall speak to this Mr. Piltdown, and I'm sure we will get everything sorted out in a trice. I hope so. Good day. Walk, walk. A good day to you. I hope your filthy animal gets better soon. Thanks. I think. Mm, I wonder if roasted penguin is any good. Come along, Laszlo. Mm, right away, Helga. That was bizarre. What? I think we'd better see about getting that scroll ourselves. What do you say? What? <coughs> oh. And maybe you should stay here. We'll be back to Betsy MacGyver, Nazi puncher, after this brief commercial interruption. A good day, my fellow Americans. This is your first lady, Eleanor Roosevelt, speaking on behalf of Barton Soups, the soup with the revolutionary taste. It was in 1899 that descendants of founding father Button Gwinnett decided to use his image to market an affordable animal feed for use by agricultural concerns. Apparently, it was so delicious, they immediately began marketing it as soup. <laughs> and that tradition lives on in Button Soup's flagship variety, Yak Slurry. <laughs> Their tradition of quality and uncompromising pursuit of profit lives on to this very day in every can, jug, and barrel of button soups. Their flavors run from A to Z, from acorn squash to zippy acorn squash. And don't forget to save your cans for the scrap metal drive going on all this month. I'll personally be checking on random American households to make sure. Are you ready for Eleanor Roosevelt? Better get down to the supermarket and stock up on button soups. This is your last warning. I won't roll over like some kind of Jeanette Rankin. <laughs> and now back to the second act of today's story, Betsy MacGyver, Nazi puncher. Uh, excuse me. I think we were speaking on the phone earlier. Could be. We had a lot of phone calls here. Uh, you might remember this one. Doubt it. You hung up on me? I hang up on a lot of people, toots. You're going to have to be more specific. I have your penguin. Oh, you're that in that case. Listen, sister, I don't have time for your shenanigans. I have important museum business to conduct. Clearly. Your desk is a terrible pile of work. I'll have you know this is a beautiful pile of work. I know right where everything is. How about a shipping order for a Humboldt penguin? It's not a magic pile, lady. <laughs> Just because you say it, it doesn't mystically appear. How about this here on the floor? Huh. Wonder what these idiots need a penguin for. I don't really care. I just want the scroll that was delivered to you in error. I'll be happy to do that. Well, gee, thanks. Right after I get my penguin. Well, it's not like I'm carrying him around. He has a cold. Oh, this again. Penguins can't get colds. 
How do you know? I am the head of the secretarial pool at the Eastern Seaboard's third largest museum dedicated to veterinary science. That's how. <laughs> well, I happen to possess two bachelor degrees. Really? In what? Um, ancient history and Latin. You must be a fun one at cocktail parties. No penguin, no scroll. Then's the breaks, doll. You, you are yeah extremely unhelpful. It's a point of pride. Do you even know where the scroll is in this egregious mess? Ha! Of course I do. Third pile over, about halfway down. You know it's almost criminal to store a precious ancient artifact in such a fashion. Oh yeah. And what are you doing with our penguin? Did you build him a little house? Get him a pool? Maybe. I put him in a drawer. <laughs> Did you say you put it in a drawer? It's cozy. I got a good mind to come over this desk and give you a sock in the jaw, lady. Uh, look, uh, behind you. What? Hey! Well, I'm sorry, but I have to have the scroll. I think there might be trouble. Oh, there's going to be trouble, all right. Hey, come back here! Dun 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 Oh, good afternoon. We are from the National Museum of Berlin. Zurich! Oh, yes, Zurich. Uh, 500 years of brotherly love. And what did we produce? The cuckoo clock. You get to get to the point quick, Shorty, because I already had my fill of wackos today. I don't think that's the best tone to take with us, ma'am. Oh, ma'am, you fella. You know what a civil servant has to put up with in New York City? It's like a war front here every day. Mm -hmm. Funny you should put it like that. A most astute observation. Frighteningly more accurate than you realize, I'm sure. Laszlo, I'll leave you to work your magic. Mm, with pleasure. Listen, buddy, I've had enough shenanigans for one day. Would you get your mitts off me? <laughs> I'm back. Ah! Oh. oh, no, now you're sneezing? Oh, poor thing. We're both having quite the day. Well, let's get a look at this scroll that has everybody in a tizzy, huh? Oh. Oh. Oh, my. Do you know what that is? That's stupid. Why would I ask a penguin that? This appears to be the Book of Thoth. See, right here, there's Thoth. He's the Egyptian bird-headed god of the moon, writing in magic. Oh, he even looks a little like you, Big Mincy. Uh, the Book of Thoth is supposed to be mythical, containing two spells. One that can allow humans to understand the speech of animals. What? suppose most of what you would say would be along the lines of, My nose is stuffy, or more fish, please. <laughs> what? The second spell is said to give the speaker the power to see the gods themselves, which would be pretty amazing, especially if they had the heads of jackals and birds and all that. I'll take Garbo over a snake-headed lady any day. <sighs> Billy, you startled me. Oh, sorry. I want to get your little friend here some sardines for my lunch pail. Here you go, buddy. What? Yeah, keep up your strength, little fella. You'll lick that cold before you know it. It's your own fault for always trying to come up with ways to bother me. My fault? Bother you? If you weren't so insistent on seeing me all the time, you wouldn't have concocted such a stupid idea. Somebody thinks pretty highly of herself. That's you, by the way. I've been stuck with an ill penguin. I had to accost a horrible woman at the veterinary museum. I had to steal a scroll. What, you stole something? I should say I've reclaimed the item that you misdelivered. Well, why didn't you take the penguin back? Can I do any more of your work as well? It's not my job to deliver packages, Billy. Well, Betsy, if that's how you feel about it, I guess I won't ask you out to the movies this weekend. Who said I wanted you to? Well, fine. I'll go see Yankee Doodle Dandy by myself. So you do keep coming by to ask me out? Oh, don't make a federal case out of it. I just thought you seemed smart and pretty. I think you're too high and mighty for me with your fancy college degrees. No, it's, it's just... Yeah, too good for a lowly delivery boy. Well, I know where I'm not wanted. Come on, Buster. Let's get you out of Betsy MacGyver's way so she can get back to her important work. There's no need to be so rude. I'm just trying to... Yeah, I'm glad I found out how you are before I wasted a lot of money on flowers. You know, I don't need to stand around here and take your guff. I'm a busy man. You're a delivery boy, Billy. A man would have enlisted in the war. You really are the end all, lady. Don't worry, I won't bother you anymore with my incompetence. I didn't say you were incompetent, just forgetful. <sighs> Infuriating. I have to take this down to Mr. Piltdown. It's one of the most significant ancient Egyptian finds ever made. Whoever sent this to us had no idea of its cultural value. You 
idiot. I must have that book. I'm looking as hard as I can. Maybe if you helped a little, we'd get it done faster. Oh, no. Oh, no, what? <gasps> oh, I didn't mean to startle you, hon. Lucille, quickly, get away from that door. Okay. What's with the sleuth routine? Piltdown cannot possibly be interesting enough to spy on. No, it, it isn't like that at all. <gasps> or is he interesting enough to spy on? Why, that old so-and-so. What is it? Gambling? Women? The old glug, glug, glug? No. No, those horrible Swiss folks are ransacking Mr. Piltdown's office. <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. I suspect they're not actually Swiss. You're thinking Austrian? No, I fear they may be secret German agents sent here after the, after some items of significance. Betsy, I know we're pals, but I think you should go see a psychiatrist. <laughs> a what? You know, a head shrinker. You let your concern for your brother take over your dreams, and now you're letting it take over your reality. My concern for my brother is not mutually exclusive from the fact that there could be Nazi spies right here, right now. We're going to have to confront this delusion head on. No, Lucille. Hello, Miss Helga, Mr. Laszlo. Uh, who is it? <laughs> it's Lucille, Mr. Piltdown's assistant. Is there something I can help you with? Uh, why, yes, we were just looking for something. Uh, perhaps you could help us locate it. Well, I, I think we should probably wait until Mr. Piltdown comes back from lunch, and then he can help you. Hey! Help! 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 Just be quiet, help! lady. Let the ether do its work. Stop! What are you doing? Ah, another one. Can I get some help now, Helga, for crying out loud? You fool! Drag that woman into the office this instant! Miss MacGyver, how terribly inconvenient for you to be here now. You're not from Switzerland. This is not a neutral way to behave. <laughs> Very astute. We are, in fact, agents of the Third Reich. Is it? Why is to reveal that? I thought we were trying to maintain secrecy. Ah, this slip of a thing is weak. Even for an American, she poses no threat to our mission. I might. I'll let you know when I start getting worried. Well, call Western Union, because I'm going to go get the police. If you go to the police, Mr. Lazo here will kill your friend. Mm, I certainly will. No! Sorry, it's just the kind of guy I am. <laughs> well, what do you want? You already know. A scroll. A scroll that was supposed to be delivered to you today. A scroll that you told us was at the Museum of Veterinary Science. But when we went there, we only met more typically rude Americans. <laughs> we were informed that the scroll was already retrieved by a young woman. And you think it was me? There's been a rash of ancient antiquated paper good thefts this summer. <laughs> Darn juvenile delinquents. A big gambit, even for a stupid Yankee. We thought you may have returned this scroll to your superior, so we took him back to our hotel room for interrogation. <laughs> that was fun. He swore he didn't know anything about the scroll. I almost believed him. But we decided to search his office anyway. I've been searching this office without help. And I found nothing. Which leads me to the inescapable conclusion that this scroll is in your possession, Betsy MacGyver. <laughs> Of course it isn't. Don't lie to me, child. Your friend's life hangs in the balance. I mean, well, I don't currently have it in my possession. I've hidden it for safekeeping. You will fetch it for me this instant! No. Uh, can I just kill her a little, Helga? Please! <laughs> it will take me a while to fetch it, and I'm only going to hand it over to you in exchange for Mr. Piltdown and Lucille. You have a deal. Cross our heart. And hope you die. <laughs> you are terrible people. We are the master race. We shall return here tonight at midnight with your burdensome friends. If you do not have this scroll, you will all die. <laughs> Slowly. Painfully. Screaming for mercy that will never arrive. We hope we've made our point. Crystal clear. Are you sure you don't want to leave Lucille here for convenience's sake? We shall take her with us. If anything happens to her... If the police or your army are with you, your friends will be dead within seconds. Midnight. My office downstairs. It's more private. Mm -hmm. See you. <laughs> what? What? Beekman? What 
are you doing here? I tried taking him back to the Museum of Veterinary Science. I suppose the woman there was rude to you, too? No. No. So what happened, then? She was dead. Lying on the floor, covered in paper. Oh, no, that's horrendous. So you're saying you didn't do it? What? (laughs) Well, you said you went to her office. You said you stole something from her. I I, I said I reclaimed something from her. Well, and then I go there and she's dead, Betsy. What am I supposed to think? You don't really think I could kill anybody, do you? Well, I didn't. But, you know, sometimes the shrinking violet is the most dangerous lady when you get her upset. I got five sisters. Trust me, I know. I couldn't hurt anybody. Ah, You're always punching folks in your dreams, aren't you? Wow, I must really talk loudly when I sleep. (laughs) That you do, and your violent tendencies are pretty obvious. My violent tendencies? Don't hurt me. (laughs) Quack, quack. Bless you. Oh, poor Beekman here. Blow your nose in this. (laughs) Quack. I found this paper on top of the secretary's body. That's the shipping manifest from the scroll. It's from my brother. Yeah, so I thought to myself, why would you leave a clue like that behind if you killed the secretary? You're too smart for that. I am. And I didn't kill anybody. I swear it. I think I believe you. At least I hope I do. You said your brother's stationed in North Africa, right? Well, he must have been near Egypt. How did he get his hands on the Book of Thoth? The what of who? This. That's not a book. That's a scroll. They didn't have bookbinding in ancient Egypt, Billy. All books were scrolls. Oh, so somebody wants this book badly enough to kill for it. Yes. Two Nazi spies. Nazis? Why didn't you say so? You you believe me? Well, I do now. How? (laughs) What? What? Oh, because when the penguin sneezed, you said, bless you, and not gesundheit. You're just making fun of me, aren't you? I don't think you could kill anybody, Betsy. I have to take care of five sisters. I I might know ladies as well as a man possibly can. You have to take care of your family? Yeah, Dad's on the European front, and Mom got sick. I I mean, I would have enlisted, but, you know, somebody's got to provide. That's pretty noble of you. Oh, yeah, sure. Now I'm no longer an incompetent delivery boy. Oh, no. You're still a forgetful delivery boy, but you're a noble one. I'm sorry for what I said earlier. That was totally uncalled for. I was just running off at the mouth because my pride was hurt. When I found that lady on the floor, I I knew you were in big trouble. Bigger than you think. The two Nazis have kidnapped Lucille and Mr. Piltdown. We gotta do something. You'll help me? Why, heck yes! No lousy Nazis are gonna come into my country and run amok. (laughs) Looks like the war has come to us, Betsy. And I have a plan. They'll be here at midnight to exchange my friends for this scroll. Why go through all of this for a crummy old scroll? Sorry. The Nazis are a very superstitious group, and this is a very rare book that purports to contain magical spells. Ooh, magic. How is guessing what card I'm holding going to help the Nazis win the war? (laughs) There are two spells in this book. One where the speaker can understand animals. Ah, and De Fuhrer thinks he's going to be Dr. Doolittle and send bears after us. (laughs) I think it's the second spell, which allows the caster to behold the gods themselves. Right, right, the bird heads and cat people and all that. If I translate this one correctly... When one beholds the gods, one will be taken for a god and given special powers. Ooh, special powers? Like what? What powers do the gods have? That would help Jerry along. We cannot let those dirty rats get this book. We won't. I have a plan. I hope it's a good one. Do you have a plan? No. Well, then it's the best plan we've got. Go grab those flashlights and meet me in the sarcophagi room. Oh, sarcophagi? Like what you keep a mummy in? Exactly. Uh, Now hurry, we don't have much time. We'll be back for the action-packed third act of today's adventure right after this message from our sponsor, Button Soups! Let's look in on a typical American family just getting ready for dinner. Ah, uh, soup for dinner again? Oh, that, that's right, son. No, button soup sure hit the spot. <laughs> I can't wait until rationing is over. I miss beef noodle. Uh, you'll eat your armadillo and barley and like it, young man. <laughs> Jeez, if it's not armadillo and barley, it's asparagus gazpacho. Or cream of mystery. <laughs> what happened to chicken and rice? Well, we're fighting men and women that need that chicken to fight the axis. You know that. <laughs> yes, sir. Did you just throw that can out? 
Yeah, so? Well, you're supposed to save it for the little scrap drive. Aw, uh, what's one little can gonna do? One can could make the difference between victory and total world domination, lad. Eleanor uh, uh, Roosevelt! You broke our wall! I warned you that I'd be checking in. Are you allowed to just bust into people's houses? Read your constitution. As the first lady, I have many exigent powers. Well, sounds fine to me. You want to know what difference one can of soup can make? The metal in one can could be the plate on a tank that rolls over Berlin, melted into the bullet that shoots down an enemy bomber, and don't forget domestic defense. Domestic defense? Yes. If you ever have a dirty Nazi invade your home, you can heave a can of soup at his head. Uh... <laughs> Ah, 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 ow, man, head! Of course, I prefer to use a full can of soup for heaving purposes. Uh, what, what happened to your voice there, son? Ha! You've won this round, Eleanor Elizabeth! How did you see through my disguise? Easy! No good, clean, well-mannered American would ever turn down a bowl of button soup. <laughs> Not even cr cream of mystery? Nope. Okay. And no red, white, and blue-blooded boy or girl would refuse to donate to the scrap drive. You've had a Nazi posing as your son all along, Mr. John Q. Smith. B but how? I think that's something we'd better take up with your wife. Wouldn't you say? Well, I think you're right. Have you got another can of that soup? Right here. Oh, honey! Could, could you come into the dining room for a second? The first lady would like a word with you. Curses! Fired again by button soups! <laughs> button soups. Try our other fantastic varieties. Minestrone gumbo. Cream of bisque. Chunko gravy. And broth stew. Make sure you keep an extra can with you at all times in case you run into Nazis. And always recycle. Eleanor Roosevelt is watching. <laughs> and now we're back for the final act of Betsy MacGyver, Nazi Puncher. At last I've captured you, Betsy MacGyver. Your days of terrorizing the Third Reich with your patriotic punching are soon to be over. Well... Not too soon. First, we must take you apart piece by piece to see what makes you tick. Mm, Dr. Mengele! Dr. Mengele! I brought you all your favorite scalpels. Ah, thank you, Laszlo. Please go and fetch my pinking shears as well. Right away! Wait, Dr. Mengele? At your service. If this service you requested was torture and death... <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Joseph Mengele? Aren't you supposed to be a man? It's your dream, Betsy. <laughs> now, be a good girl and stay chained to that table. Uh, you'll never get away with this. That's pretty much up to you, isn't it? Uh, what do you mean? In you know, all the dreams you've had, punching brown shirts and other members of the Axis, when have you ever been in a position like this? Well, in the name of uh, Clarence Darrow, Mark Twain, and John Adams, get ready! For the beating of your life! I notice you're still strapped down. <laughs> mm, Dr. Mangala, here's your pinking shears. Mm, and I also brought your branding iron, your bamboo shoots, some thumbtacks, and your Chinese water torture machine. And there's my sulfuric acid. Ah, uh, you ran out. I, I found some hydrochloric, though. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> you just have to make do. You don't mind, do you, Betsy? I... I can't get free. <laughs> That's the point, my little pretty. But... but this is my dream. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is your nightmare. <laughs> the end of Betsy MacGyver. It's all over now, Betsy. Betsy. Betsy, Betsy, Betsy. wake up, Betsy. Betsy, wake up. B -b come on, we've huh? got work to do, Betsy. Oh, Billy, I was dreaming again. Yeah, another dream of beating the stuffing out of Fritz to get you in the mood? No, it was... Uh, never mind. 
Well, I hope you're rested. We've got to finish setting up for your plan for tonight. Not sure this is going to work, Betsy. Uh, don't worry, Billy. I'm an expert mummy wrapper. Mr. Piltdown has me clean the mummy bindings all the time. Uh, have these ever been on a mummy? Maybe. Ah! <laughs> ah you, you know what? Maybe we need to think a little harder. We could probably come up with something a little less disgusting. <laughs> This'll work, Billy. Trust me. Well, besides, we're almost done. Okay. Let's make sure I have this plan straight. When the Nazis show up, I'll make sure that Mr. Piltdown and Lucille are okay. I'll hand over the scroll. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that part. Helga will read the second spell. Hey, are you really sure about that part, too? I know a thing or two about women, Billy. Plus, you can always count on a lousy Nazi rat to act selfishly. So she reads the spell. I come out of the sarcophagus and scare the bejesus out of them, Lon Chaney Jr. style. <laughs> While they're paralyzed with fear, I'll get the drop on them, then snatch back the book. Then we call the FBI and put these Huns behind bars for good. And then get me unwrapped as soon as possible. <laughs> I can't really move my arms and legs. Well, then the splints are doing their job. You're the one who wanted them. Have you not seen the movies? That's how mummies walk. <laughs> yes, that's how real-life mummies walk. You know what I mean. I do, but thank you for trivializing what I spent four years studying at NYU. You have no right to be grumpy. You're not covered in 2,000-year-old Band-Aids. And you don't have to conk two Nazis in the head. Oh, have to? Don't act like that isn't your lifelong dream. This isn't a dream, Billy. It's real life. So, in real life, I'm dressed like a mummy so you can beat up Nazis that have infiltrated New York. Your dreams must be really weird. <laughs> oh, no, it's almost midnight. I'll get into your sarcophagus. Okay. Well, I'll leave it open a bit so you can breathe. Oh, so kind of you. Do you remember the signal? Yes, you will shout, Oh no! Ra Amon Ka is awake! That's right. Well, stay alert. I'll bring them up here to make the exchange. Oh no! I forgot to feed Beekman. My mom always says you have to feed a cold. What? What? Oh, I'm sorry, Beekman here. The all night deli was the only place open, but I brought you some locks. What? What? I know you don't understand me, being a penguin and all, but I'm worried. Even my dreams have turned against me. What? <coughs> Don't eat so fast. I've always wanted to be like my brother. Maybe that's why he sent me that book. It's my chance to help him and everyone else fighting the good fight. You Americans, always so full of empty sentiment. Helga, you're early. We are highly organized. Your watch is probably slow. Mm, you know what they say. If you're not early, mm, you're late. And if you don't have our book, late is exactly what you and your friends will be. First, where are my friends? Mr. Laszlo, would you be so kind? Where go? Where go? Here they are. Hardly any worse for wear. Helga wouldn't let me have any fun with them. Everything has its place, Laszlo. And I didn't want you messing up our hotel room. Let me untie them. No! You will hand over the book of sauce immediately. I, I've placed it upstairs. Follow me. Mr. Laszlo, will you kindly stay with our prisoners? If I'm not back in 15 minutes, you have my permission to do as you please with them. Mm. Oh, boy. I I've got some new techniques I've been dying to try out. If Betsy MacGyver returns without me, I want you to kill everyone and burn this place to the ground. What? And make a pillow out of that disgusting creature. Mm. Can I make pillows out of them all? <laughs> if time permits. Mm. Hooray! <laughs> Leads away, Betsy. Right this way. It serves you right, you know. Me? All of you Americans, so complacent in your own hemisphere. You're not even 200 years old, but you think you can defeat the ancient Aryan master race. You Germans are over 2,000 years old and still haven't learned the lesson thousands of other tyrants have learned the hard way. No king is appointed by divine right. The liberties of all men are essential and universal. Ha! I tire of your baseless bravado. Give me the book! Right through here. Here, underneath this tablet. <gasps> Beautiful. The book of sauce. 
<laughs> I can't believe that American G.I. almost got this from me. American G.I.? Some meddlesome member of your army stumbled across my archaeological dig when I was excavating the Book of Sauce. He seemed to know something about ancient Egypt. He got the drop on us and confiscated the book. Only later, upon interrogation, did he reveal that he'd sent it to the United States. My brother. Your brother? He was quite formidable. He held up quite well against Mr. Laszlo's interrogation. For a while. What did you do to him? Left him in the Cairo hospital. He might walk again. You monsters! Then you are a superior being, Miss MacGyver. It is the inferior creatures who are monstrous, hideous to behold, and bothersome to tolerate. I suppose you hate Gene Kelly and Christmas, too. <laughs> I have love only for myself. This little excursion is purely selfish, I assure you. What? Did you think I would take the Book of Zoss back to the Reichstag? To that pointless patriarchal dinosaur? It is women with our ability to suffer and persevere, to absorb the indignities of man and society, and yet still bring life into this world. And as a woman of the master race... I am going to take my rightful place with the pantheon of gods and rule the world! Yes, if any of that were true. And if you could read ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. Emhotep! Emhaset nat ra! Oh, you can. Hotep dinisu! Uther ma'at re! Setep en re! What's going on up here? I heard shouting. Your cohort has decided to betray you and your precious Third Reich. I wish I could say I was surprised. <laughs> She's meddling with forces and powers she cannot possibly hope to control. Ah, oh, that's just a lot of nonsense. Ankh! Bajasaneb! Oh no! Ra Amunka is awake! Mummy? But, 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 but that's inconceivable! <laughs> yes, I control the powers of the gods themselves. The raw energy can even summon souls back from the land of the dead. <laughs> Go, my minion! Destroy them! Uh, you know what's lovely this time of year? Uh, the Black Forest. Dark, scary, but entirely devoid of mummies. <laughs> so if you'll excuse me, I'll just... Oh! A waste of a perfectly beautiful Telemic era jar. Mm. Billy, what are you doing here? Go scare Helga. Mm. Who dares disturb Ra Amunka? Oh, dear. Hey, where'd you get the other mummy, Betsy? <laughs> Wait. Yikes! Run, Billy! I'm trying, but my legs don't bend! I told you not to wear those! It's how a mummy walks! See? What do you know? They do walk like that. I accept your apology. Well, enjoy it while you can. This is bad. Really bad. I can see them. The faces of the gods. They beckon me to join them. I can feel their unparalleled power. It courses through me. When were you going to hit her on the head again? Shut up. I'm thinking. What? 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 Beekman. Well, he must have gotten out with Laz when Laszlo came upstairs. Come here, Beekman, come here. That's a good penguin. He's walking over to the, the, the mummy. Oh, no, Beekman, look out! No, the, 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 the mummy, it's, it's stopping. Of course. A penguin walks upright and has a bird's head. The mummy thinks that Beekman is the god Thoth. <laughs> the mummy looks afraid. Quack, quack. The, the mummy's running away. Yeah, right towards that weird portal opening up behind Helga. <laughs> That portal, apparently beholding the faces of the gods, means they will enter our world. Ra! Shu! Osiris! Nepsis! Isis! I am ready to join your ranks and receive your strengths. What? 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 The first spell. The ability to understand the speech of animals. Well, what's he saying? I don't know. I didn't say the spell, stupid. You know, just because the world's about to end doesn't give you an excuse to be rude. What? What? No! Lies! Your Majesties, this is but a disgusting bird and not a deity like us. You, ca you cannot possibly... The ancients revered animals. I got it. No, where are you going? Don't go up there. Hey, Beekman, buddy. What? What? See? This puny mortal 
will consort with filthy lower light forms. They don't look like they appreciate that talk, Helga. Some of those folks are half bird. They won't share this world with them. They've already absorbed enough power to rule the planet and live forever. You better close that portal. They look like they're getting closer. An easy feat. Then I will deal with you, puny mortal. You can try to steal the power of the gods through magic, Helga. But that power is there for anyone to take. Ah, you're not prepared to hold this much power. That's the thing about you fascists. You think you're special. But ordinary folks would be overwhelmed to have your power. But now you have to learn your lesson. No king is appointed by divine right. And never mess with the United States of America. Betsy, what happened? I gave her a wallop she won't soon forget. Right into the portal. She's in the realm of the ancients now. How did you do that? When Beekman made his case to the gods, they decided to imbue me with some power of my own. Quack! 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 Well, apparently they didn't give me the power it was there for me to claim. Quack! 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 That's so kind of you to say, Beekman. (laughs) Through my bravery and conviction, the power to defeat evil was mine for the taking. Quack! Quack! (laughs) Bless you. And yes, we will get you some fish very soon. Uh, We just have to call the FBI to pick up Mr. Laszlo here. And maybe unwrap me? My arms have fallen asleep. Well, of course. Uh, just a second. Whoa. Oh, that that was fast. It was. And kind of scary. I must have some residual power left. So I suppose it'd be a bad idea to ask for a hug. <laughs> uh, best not to risk it yet. Maybe it'll wear off. Maybe. <laughs> These things don't always start the same way. One day you're just a girl from New York City, and the next thing you know, you're on a plane to Berlin. The good old U.S. of A. has a job for you, and nobody can resist Uncle Sam when he says he needs your help, especially for a job like this. Huh? Huh? Who? What? Mr. Hitler, I'd say it's a pleasure, but it's not. Who are you? Just an average American named Betsy MacGyver. And I'm here with a little message from every man, woman, and child in the land of the free and the home of the brave. And just what is that? <laughs> ah! <laughs> this week's episode, Betsy MacGyver, Nazi Puncher, was written and directed by Keith Suda. Featured in today's cast were Ren Goodman as Betsy MacGyver! Sadie Casaba as Lucille, Helga, Selma, and Eleanor Roosevelt! The man of over 9,000 voices, Christian McDaniel as Mr. Piltdown, Beekman, Herman Goering, Laszlo, the son from the Button Soup Set, and the Mummy! And key to this, Mr. Announcer, Hitler, Billy, and the father from the buttons. <laughs> Live sound effects by Maria Klein and Paul Levet. <laughs> Thanks, as always, to the Equinox Theater and their fine sponsors, KGLTFM, and all of our fantastic listeners here and elsewhere. Join our Facebook page. Keep up with us at dcyeradio.com. This week's episode is dedicated to the memory of Peter Bergman of the Firesign Theater, the biggest single creative influence on my life. Tune in next week when Ryan Kasava takes you down another spine-chilling trip down the dark hallway. Until then, this is Mr. Announcer reminding you, don't close your eyes. That's this week's show. Thanks so much for joining us. Please leave your kind remarks on iTunes. It does help others find us. You can tweet us at Sonic Society and at Astro Tour 2010. Find us on the Facebook groups, including the Sonic Society and Audio Drama Radio Drama Lovers. Go to audiodramatalk.com and chat up a storm. <laughs> Wherever you are, we love to hear from you. And until we do, we'll see you next time in the Society. I'm Jack Ward. And I'm David Alt. Good night. Good night. <laughs> The 
Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production.